have a bit of a confession to make. When it comes to wild game cooking, I'm kind of a professional thief. I tend to look at what good regular chefs are doing, and then I find a way to do something similar with wild game. I prey heavily on people like this fella right here, Eduardo Garcia, a professional Montana-based chef, hunter, and fisherman. Today, with his help, we're gonna whip up a whole pile of smoked meat. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. On this meat eater cooking special, I'm stealing largely from this fella right here, Eduardo Garcia. He used to cook in the belly of a ship. Country boy, hunter, fisherman. I uh, went to culinary school and turned professional chef. 11 years on a yacht, uh, amazing, traveled the world. Like a private chef yeah, on a boat. Yeah, cooking for families. Catching fish and cooking them. Yeah, cooking for families, and, and the coolest part were crew members from all over the world. So it was really playing with food, getting paid to do it, and getting paid to cook out of markets of the world. I mean, yeah. like a kid and culinary kid's dream come true. That's when I first read your book, The Scavenger's Guide. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it was, it was yachting. <laughs> so the inspiration goes both ways. But uh, I mean, I spent 11 years professional cooking and then came home. I, I wanted to do more of this. I wanted to cook for family with friends um, and then started Montana Max, which is a retail food brand. It's a good name. It's a good name. And then let me tell you, it's been an eye opener. And this is why I like doing this more because it's I do a lot of recipe testing, but just getting down and cooking over a fire or smoking, like the flavor of smoked food or grilling will always win my heart, like every time. Smoking started out as a preservation technique. Yeah. It inhibits bacterial growth, which is probably just accidental, to the primary thing is it kept bugs off it. Right. But then you taste it, you're like, oh, you know what? And it's good too. Yeah, yeah and, and it tastes amazing. It was just like the practical matter of, I want meat that's not rotten, therefore it's probably gonna be brined and smoked. Eduardo and I are going to be making four main dishes. Smoked muskox tongue, smoked mallard duck, smoked mountain whitefish empanadas, and a dry rubbed smoked whitetail roast. But before we smoke anything, we need to prep our meat. One of the first steps we gotta take here is we're gonna work on the tongue. Now this is a muskox tongue. It's like such an underutilized, underappreciated cut of meat. In American culture, I don't understand why. Well, for hunting anyway, I'm one of the only guys I know, other than you, I guess, that, that, that take it out of the field, that A, wanna hike it out, and then B, know what to do with it afterwards. I only started pulling these out of animals within the last handful of years. Do you come through the back of the jaw? I come right here and cut here. Yes. Peel this back, and then actually pull the tongue out so it's coming down. Yeah. And then sever it. Okay. And that's what the hide hunters used to do. Like, you know, you always hear about the buffalo hunters, the hide hunters, guys that shoot buffalo to get hides. They would send barrels full of buffalo tongues packed in brine to the east. It used to be just utilized more than it is now. In the historic record, there's cases where people have killed 5,000 buffalo in a group just to sell the tongues. Three bucks a piece. Everything else just stayed in the field? Yep, because you could get it so fast. That is unbelievably wasteful and just blows my mind. Yeah. While this happens to be a muskox tongue, you can do similar preparations with pretty much any tongue pulled out of any large North American game animal. My preparation is based off of the cured beef tongue you find in the good Jewish delis of large American cities where it's commonly eaten as a sandwich on rye bread. So what I do with this, this thing's already cured. For a cure, I use sugar, salt, black pepper, coriander and fennel, kind of mashed up, a little prog salt or cure salt number one. That gives it like a nice color and, and increases the shelf life on it. So it, it inhibits bacterial growth. Now, to cure the tongue, it's really simple. You take this stuff here, mix this stuff, put it in a Ziploc bag, I put half of it down, lay the tongue on there, put the other half in there, wrap the bag up and put it in my fridge and flip it every day. And then you pull it out and rinse it. The next step is trying to get this skin off. To get the skin off, you put the tongue in a pot of simmering water and let it go for a few hours. Then you drop the tongue in a bath of ice water to quickly cool it. Slice the outer skin and slowly, gently peel that away. Once it's skinned, it's set for the smoke. Okay, so here we have a mallard duck, one of the most hunted ducks in America. 
and you'll notice that he still has his skin on him. If you skin your ducks, stop. You really need to leave skin on ducks, not divers, because the skin is real fishy and oily, but on your puddle ducks, okay? Your ducks that don't go underwater to feed, leave the skin on them, because it's great fat, it just makes them so much better, it keeps them drying out, tastes great, leave it on there. This bird here, he's been gutted, and he's been soaked for about 24 hours in a liquid brine. Half gallon of water, some salt, some sugar, some maple syrup, hearing salt. Pull them out, we're gonna let them sit and dry before going into the smoker. A big sin you can make on duck is overcooking duck. Even in a smoker, I still don't like to cook it anywhere beyond medium rare. Sure. It just, it turns gray and nasty. I got friends that call ducks, like I was like, oh, flying livers. I'm like, yes, because you <laughs> overcook them yeah. to sinful levels. That's the number one food allergy is when someone has screwed up a dish. Yeah. Oh, I don't like tomatoes or I don't like salmon. Well, it was probably not fresh or the tomatoes were not in season, you know? And so it's the same thing. A duck that tastes like liver was probably cooked till well done. Goes from being thing A to being thing B when it's overcooked. So even though we're smoking it, we're not gonna cook it until it's just this gray, nasty mess. Okay, here we've got a whitetail roast, America's meat, more now than at the time the Columbus landed in the West Indies. No way. Oh yeah, whitetail deer, yeah, they're doing good. In my opinion, two areas on a deer carcass yield cuts that are fail safe for grilling and hot smoking, meaning any cook with even a basic skill level will be able to pull it off. The loins, which are very easy to work with, and the upper cuts of the back hams. Before you start smoking the roast, slice away any silver skin and fat. Bring the meat to room temp before cooking it and give it a good generous rub of salt and pepper or else a nice dry rub blend. A favorite of mine is garlic powder, black pepper, onion powder, dry mustard, salt, paprika, and thanks to Eduardo's recommendation, pasilla negra pepper. Yeah, that, that smells great right now. You can, like the, the moisture from the muscle, from, from the meat itself, just is hydrating all those spices right now. You can yeah, smell no, it. Yeah, for sure. That's a crowd pleaser. Yeah. Like mother-in-law, whatever. You don't have a mother-in-law, but if you did have one, you could feed them that. Note to self for the future. Yes. Okay, the next dish is gonna start out with me giving a public service announcement on behalf of the Mountain Whitefish. <laughs> I don't need to give it to you because you know Oh yeah, I'm truth. a believer, man. The rivers of the American West are full of fish that people dumped out of barrels into the rivers. They have names such as rainbow trout, brown trout. They're in large measure a synthetic creation. This guy has been here since the beginning of time as we know it, the mountain whitefish. People look down on it. They talk about it being a trash fish. Man. Mountain carp. Yeah. Why does everyone hate this fish? I have no idea. Dependable, when you wanna eat, and you like to eat from your surroundings, you can always catch a whitefish. Yeah. Almost, Someone put a gun to your head and said, catch a fish. You'd be like, no problem, it will yeah. be a whitefish. Give, give me a hair's ear bead head, size 18. It's a gorgeous fish. We used to brine them, smoke them, and make dip. There's a consistency in Rocky Mountain whitefish that mm -hmm. is like phenomenal. Yeah. It's always flaky, pure white meat, and it takes to frying, it's baking, smoking super well. My dad is a fisherman from Mexico, and fried fish tacos are our favorite. So we're gonna smoke it, flake the meat off, and make empanadas. First, we need to brine the fish in water with salt, black peppercorns, bay leaves, and chipotle peppers. I've been playing with chipotles for a while. Um, so chipotle being smoked jalapeno. Yeah. Then it's dried out. Exactly. Yeah. So I'll just throw a couple of these into this brine. Um, and I think what they're gonna do is they're just, they're gonna double up on just the smoke that it'll get in the Traeger. Mm -hmm. But um, also, the heat will come out of these chipotles a little bit. Oh, I mean, sure. empanadas, Latino food, I gotta have some spice to it. So just a little bit, you know, yep. add some flavor to it. And the reason it's on the stove top is I'm just gonna heat the water up a little bit. Just to get everything to dissolve. Just to help dissolve it. Yeah. If you have so many brine ingredients in your water, 
that you can't whisk it into warm water. I feel like you probably have too much in there. Oh my gosh, if you've whisked and you still have grain of any kind, crystal of any kind, it's over salted or over sugar. Slightly warm water, even warm water out of a tap, whisk it in, you should be able to get everything dissolved and, inside that and brine. And key though, uh, if you are gonna warm it at all, cool it off before you throw your yeah. protein in because we're not poaching, we're not cooking. Um, or yeah, you'll mush. If you put yeah. this fish in 100 degree yeah. water, it's gonna not, yeah. it's not gonna do him any You favors. just ruined it. Cool, so we're gonna take our Rocky Mountain Whitefish, throw them in this loaf pan. We've got our brine here, and we just want them fully covered. We're gonna throw them in the fridge, and we're gonna let these guys sit overnight? Yeah. 20, 24 hours before they go into the smoker? Oh yeah, that's plenty, man. That'd be perfect. All right, we're gonna jump into making a bunch of sides that go with smoked foods. You have a bunch of them you wanna make, and they all have like a very international flair. Latino. South of here. Yeah, in any Latino culture, especially in Mexico, there's the condiments, the toppings. So you yeah. picture like all this stuff, you just kind of lay it all out. People do what they want with it. Yeah, yeah. kind of more of that festive, it's all in the middle. You got your different toppings, your cooked meats, pile of warm tortillas, and just get down, go for yeah, it. Yeah, I'm with you. So what's the first one you're gonna do? Pickled red onions. So with pickled red onions bring acidity into the fried empanadas. Yeah. You get it on here, this is a dry cast iron, and it's just gonna start blackening it. We're gonna let it do its thing, background task. Next thing, I think we should get into rose hip chutney. Yeah. Rose hips grow all over this region, and it's gonna yield a chutney that's gonna be fruity and tangy and have that nice spice background. Add all ingredients, bring to a boil, let sit. When I'm home, I'm cooking for little kids. I used to use a lot of ginger, like any kind of like pepper. Now I use a little bit because like the one thing that like goes in their mind, man, is when something seems spicy, they just, it's just out of their mouth. Baby steps, that's why they're called that's, baby yeah, that's steps. Why, yeah, I never want to burn them out, you know? Because now and then they'll eat something and you'll see a visible like, Yeah. And I'm like, wow, man, he really hates that. Uh-oh, I screwed up on that <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. This will thicken up as soon as that rose hip starts Yeah, hydrating. as soon as it starts to come back to life. A Absolutely. Bit, you know? Yeah. yeah. Check this out. So this is our, our red onion that's Oh, dry. he's rolling now. See how you can start seeing it bubble like this yep. right now? That's kind of an indicator like, hey, time to turn. Let's get this avocado salsa going. Grab a serrano chili. Seed him or don't seed Let's him? Let's seed him, yeah. Cilantro. Now, do you want the stems? Love the stems for Good. flavor. Yeah. Just cut a lemon in half, like a teaspoon of salt, and then half a cup of water. That's great. So that's ready for tacos. That's beautiful. Steve, next thing, a red onion has just been doing its thing. Dude, that's magic, man. Isn't that something? Yeah. Let's let, let it uh, cool. Let it cool, just so it's easier to easier to work with. And then I want to make a smoked habanero salsa. Gotcha. Let's take six romas, single habanero. I'll blister garlic also with the paper, just the way, same way we did the onion. Squeeze it out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's grab a red onion. That's about as simple as it gets. We're gonna brown all of our veggies, and then we'll throw them into a basket to get that smoke. Oh, it smells amazing, man. That's, that's the smell yeah, of a Mexican like market right there. Mm -hmm. Red onion, and you can feel that it's, it's soft almost all the way through, so it should be just a little uncooked in the middle. Why do they not teach you this after they teach you how to boil water, man? I feel like you should go like boil water, Char onions. Char onion. <laughs> the hook works as an auger, man. You see that? You gotta work with your tools. Work with what man gave you? Yeah, work, work with what life gave you. They could go right now, but I think it benefits with at least a few hours, uh, if not overnight sitting. Yeah, spot on, man. My new favorite thing. That's amazing. This is supposed to be a smoked salsa, which means it's time to fire up the Traeger grill and smoker. We fill the hopper with pellets and get to about 250 degrees. First, we'll do a slower round of smoking that includes the salsa vegetables, the mallard, the muskox tongue, and the whitefish. Yeah, some places they call that a party. Dig it. Yeah, me too, me too. While the meat is smoking away, Eduardo shows me how to make homemade tortillas using an old school wooden press. This is the clutch move right here, pressing the tortilla. So once you get it in a ball, get it in the center, give it just like a preemptive kind of press, stamp it down. With the handle, we're gonna wanna 
I'll do the first one here. You're gonna want to press, open it up, check the material. Give it a flip, 180, because it's gonna be a tighter on this yeah, side. Yeah, that was not enough. Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah, that, that, that is textbook. Perfect, right there. You're gonna peel the top layer off, peel it back, go. Zam! So, we want these to puff up. That's the trophy tortilla, is when they steam and puff on the inside. That's the Boone and Crockett tortilla. That is the Boone and Crockett tortilla. Eduardo finishes up the tortillas, and I go check on our progress with the smoker. The white fish is done cooking first, which means it's time to make some empanadas. What a beautiful looking filet though, you know? Did it capture some of that smoke? Yep. Yeah. The fish is ready when you can gently lift the flesh away from the bones using a fork. We mix in the white fish with what Eduardo calls a fry up, this one being his father's go-to blend. White onion, garlic, tomato, fresh thyme and oregano, cooked down in avocado oil. The empanadas start with an uncooked tortilla. Take our whitefish filling, just kind of fill it in just like this. Not too much, not too little. Give it a turn. And the beauty of the plastic bags, it helps you kind of just press it down like that. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You just want to be really delicate with how you peel it off. And we'll slip it into some hot oil. Layer empanadas in just like that. Oh, yeah. Give these guys a little turn. Man, that was beautiful. Yeah. Next out of the smoker are the veggies for our smoked tomato habanero salsa. I haven't tasted yet, but I'm already digging this way to make salsa, man. Charred garlic, red onion, tomato, cilantro, lime, salt, habanero. That should be all we need. That one habanero. Yeah, it'll have some crank to it. And uh, I like to leave some chunk in it too, but it's really a personal preference. Yeah, nice and chunky. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Ooh, oh man, that one freaking pepper. <laughs> it's good though. It's subtle, like I feel like some people would wouldn't immediately jump out and be like, oh, it's a smoked salsa. But it's right. there, you know. Yeah, it is. Next to come off are the duck and the tongue. Then we add the whitetail roast, which cooks hot at 450 degrees. While that cooks, we slice up the duck and the tongue. Oh man. That tastes great. Gotta be good with that chutney. You see the cure made it in quite a ways. Oh, yeah. That looks tender though. It looks like it's cutting perfectly, huh? Oh yeah, man. Check that out. It's tasty. That's good. You'd never guess. Musk ox tongue, huh? How old was the animal? Was it a bull or a Yeah, cow? it was an older bull. Okay. He had hair on him that was 20 some inches long. There's nothing long, like, except for a horse's tail. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. Hangs down to the ground, man. Is my hair gonna grow 10 inches tomorrow now? Might. Man. Our venison roast comes off, and we're ready to dig in. I'll start with the empanada. Now, what, if I was gonna do this proper, like where would I, what would I do with it? Proper, like grandma style, split it in half, get it like that. This is how grandmas do it? Yeah. And then salsa, top it, just like that. And then you wanna throw a couple pickled onions on it. Boom. It's like a little ice cream cone now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Oh yeah. How have I never made one of those, man? That's what I said. No, these guys, you could either cut it up or just lay it in their hole about them doing this. The musk ox? Yeah, musk ox tongue. Man, just the fact that we're eating musk ox tongue in my house is just a treat. I would say that avocado sauce on that is gonna be exceptional too. Yeah. Oh yeah. That looks like the money. That is tender. Wow. Yeah. I like having like little fixings, man, that are good for a bunch of different things. I keep eyeballing that smoked duck. I think it's time. Why does chutney go good with smoked duck? I think duck lends itself naturally to tart and sweet things. It loves that flavor combo and that flavor profile. Yeah, yeah. So whitetail 
Rocky Mountain whitefish, mallard, muskox. All this does, it gets me fired up for upcoming fall, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then, and isn't that the beautiful thing is like, we hunt all kind of fall season, winter, and then there's a dormant period where you're smoking, you're kind of putting things away, mm -hmm. and then you get to eat, eat them throughout the year until like, you know, you see September start rolling around again, you know? Yeah. I love it, it keeps the conversation going 24 seven all year. Oh yeah, it keeps you in the hunt and mind frame, man. Yeah. Even when you're just sitting in your kitchen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, man, it was fun. I'm reinvigorated to go home and cook new stuff. My wife won't be as bored with me anymore. I like it. I got your back, man. I'll sometimes claim that I'm a self-taught cook, but really, that's a load of BS. I learned what I know by doing this right here, cooking and eating with men and women who forge strong connections to their ingredients by living full lives in the wild and great outdoors. As they pass through my life, I pick up the flavors and bits of knowledge that they're willing to let off, just like how a piece of meat or fish will gather in the essence of passing smoke. 